we've got a big day planned today. So many things we want to get done outside, but the most important, and probably what will take us all day, is we want to fill all of the beds on the bank. We only have one of them filled, and we want to get all that done so that we'll be ready for planting in the next few weeks. Corey and Austin have come over to help us today, so we're kind of having a work day. Katie's off gallivanting, so she'll miss out on the, on the hard work, but she'll also miss out on the big spread of breakfast I made for everybody. So we've got hash browns, Corey brought some fruit, and she's got some uh, blackberries and blueberries and strawberries cut up. I made some buttermilk biscuit bread. Corey's got her turkey bacon, she prefers that. We've got bacon, we've got scrambled eggs, Corey made the eggs for me. We've got fried apples and gravy, so it's a real feast. I said I might have went overboard, it might be uh, that after we eat, we need to take a nap instead of getting out there and getting to work. So we just finished that delicious breakfast. Corey and I got the whole kitchen cleaned up and everything put up. Matt and Austin have been out here rearranging the vehicles and making a way for us to get closer to the, to the bank and kind of thinking about what we're going to put in the first layer. We've already, Matt and I, together and then I've worked on it some by myself but have kind of went over the bank where they cut all that stuff back and any kind of branches or pieces of, of trees you know maybe about that big we've thrown them in the bottom of the beds for like that first layer well since we burn wood uh, for heat what happens is down at our wood wood yard where we chop wood, where Matt chops it and we stack it before we take it into the house of course what accumulates there is a lot of kind of old wood or the bark that comes off of the logs, just a, a lot of debris from the cutting the trees or cutting the logs for firewood. So we're going to scoop up a lot of that and kind of using uh, the opportunity to clean that up, but then also having a place to put that mess, we're going to put it in some of the beds. And then we've got the compost that we bought, the mushroom compost, we're definitely going to use some of that. And then we've got some dirt that we can put on the top tops of them, just kind of for that very top layer. And maybe even a little bit more mulch, I'm not sure how we'll do it. But now we're ready to get to work. So all the milk jugs that Corey and I started, you can see down in there, this is the only one that actually is growing and that's chamomile. 
The other ones that we tried to start were lemon balm and coneflower, and they just didn't come up, neither one of them. I've not give up on this method, though. I want to try it again next year and start earlier in the winter. The beautiful miniature sunflower that little Quincy talked me into buying is blooming. It's so pretty, isn't it? It's just lovely. I wonder, I'll try to save the seeds from it. Maybe next year I can, I can have another one. I'm glad he talked me into it, though, because it's so pretty. So the rain that we had really perked up the plants that Matt and I planted by the steps one evening this week. I divided the thrift up and kind of planted it in different places along the edge there, and it really perked up after it rained. So I think it's going to be really nice there. And you may be wondering why we planted it so close to the steps instead of over towards the wall. Well, for one thing, I want it, I don't want it necessarily growing against the wall, but the main reason is, is right in the middle of this area is our, is a water pipe. So that was why we stayed away from the middle. I still think though, it's going to be really lovely, especially this time next year. I've been, you want to get that and spray some of that, it's that diatomaceous earth, I'll finish that out and I'll go in and turn it off and I'll be right back. Do you see a deer track? Because I can't see it. Oh, what did that get to? <laughs> Is that your doing? No, it's Corey's. No, goodness. Got you again. Yeah. That's what I always thought. Are you sure you can't see? Uh, something has to eat that one, though, but I don't think it's a deer. Thanks to Corey and Austin's help, we were able to finish all the beds. That chore has been completed. Now all we have to do is plan in them when the time gets here. We all went in and had some dinner and Corey and Austin have had to go on home and do some other things and Matt and I are gonna cover the cabbage. If you've seen the girls videos, you probably know about the monkey that the girls and Matt have this ongoing, there's a monkey and a car and they have a little bo matchbox car. They have this ongoing game that they hide this for each other until they find it. And they've been doing it for years, literal years. So Corey and Katie had a video at Christmas where we they actually got someone at a restaurant to put it in Matt's hamburger. But today, Corey put it out here by the cabbage. So that's what I was trying to get, get Matt to look at the last cabbage um, that something had been eaten on. And I was telling him to double check, make sure he didn't see any deer sign until he finally, finally noticed the, the little monkey. Lots of fun. I don't know how they started doing it, but they've been doing it for many, many years. It's a fun game, though. Makes every, I don't ever play, take part in it, but it's other than like today to kind of encourage Matt to keep looking until he's seen it. But the girls and Matt all have a, have a lot of fun doing it. So something had been eaten, though, a little bit of the cabbage, just a little of the leaves. Um, not it wasn't a deer or anything just some kind of little beetle or little bug so what we were doing was putting diatomaceous earth on it so to kind of ward off any bugs that might still be on it and then we're going to cover it now this is only the this will be the third year that we've covered our cabbage a friend comments on all the videos Papa Ed Ammons he told us that one year when he did that how much better it was because it protects the the cabbage from worms from the moths that are millers that lay their eggs and then they the worms you know the larvae stages that go through anyway he told us about that 
and so I we tried it and it worked wonderful it worked so well well these first hoops this is what we're using again this year they're really narrow and that's what we used the first year because I didn't measure right and that's what I ordered but they worked well it's just that by the end of the season when we were going to harvest the cabbage they had almost you know kind of pushed out the the fabric and kind of filled in the whole space well last year we had the bigger ones but what happened is well there's two things we had to plant the cabbage in a different place and my flowers kind of took over but that those bigger ones left so much room underneath that with the cabbage that other things just grew up beside the cabbage and kind of took over so i'm i'm asking matt to go back to the small ones i might regret that but this is like i said only our third year of trying it so i want to try the small ones again it might just be that they did so much better the first year that we used them even though that was the smaller ones might have been the location not the size of the actual hoops but we're going to try the small ones again this year the things we planted outside the greenhouse are doing good this is calendula there that's the one we started inside the greenhouse and this is more of the flowers that little quincy helped me pick out i think they'll fill in and hopefully this whole thing by the end of summer will just be full of beautiful blooms grape Pretty good. Is grape your favorite? Out of this bunch it is, I think. Think we got a lot done? Yeah. I know it was a lot of work. Very nice for Corey and Austin to come help us. Feeling sorry for the old people to come and help us. No, we helped them. They're just paying us back. Makes it easier to have more people helping though, for sure. It'd be real easy if we just got somebody else to do all of it. You'd miss it. Think so? mm -hmm. I don't think it'd taste as good if you if somebody else was the person doing all the work and you just eat it. I think it tastes extra special when you do the work. I guess so. I'm glad we got the cabbage covered. Mm -hmm. I've had it planted for what, three weeks? Yeah. The stuff won't eat it now. Three more weeks we'll be ready to start planting all kinds of stuff, right? Actually, a little sooner than that. According to what the weather's done, we may plant it before now. May get brave. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being brave someone asked me if I would if we would talk about snakes in our area uh, you know which ones are poisonous and if we worry about them and all that kind of stuff I'm sure we probably mentioned it in other videos but we could certainly talk about it again so where we live the two poisonous snakes that you have to worry about are rattlesnakes and copperheads mm -hmm. and they are in our area but we, you rarely see them out in the garden. Most of the time, if you're moving around and doing a bunch of stuff, they they go away without you even knowing it. Sometimes if you're walking in the woods, you might almost step on one or something like that. I mean, you we have to keep our eye out. I'm not saying you're, we're just totally careless, but it's not something that we would let deter us from being outside or in the woods or in the garden. You just kind of learn to 
to keep an eye out for them and maybe we don't think so much about them i mean we definitely don't want to get bit and we're not going to play with snakes or you know anything like that but we don't really give it much thought because we grew up in the area mm. and we were both outdoors a lot growing up in the gardens in the woods all that so it's just kind of something you just learn to be really aware of and be careful but not to be overly scared of yeah i'm not gonna be scared of them they're very scared of me yeah well <clears throat> mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen them here oh yeah copper has seen rattlesnakes here in the yard but not much mm -mm. we've been here almost 30 years yeah and I've seen two rattlesnakes in the yard, but I've seen many, many, many more copperheads. And most of the, do you agree, most of the snakes we've seen are not actually in the garden areas, they're in the driveway usually, right. on, the, on the gravel. One of the rattlesnakes was in the garden area, but that's been, gosh, that's been 15 years ago, I guess. Yeah, a long time. I did kill a big copperhead right there, over yeah. right under the feed barrel. It's just a thousand wonders. I saw it because it was under the barrel. The, the barrel's, barrel's raised up on blocks. And I just happened to look right underneath the barrel as I was walking by and I saw it. And that's right where we walk right up to the barrel with your knees right against it to get chicken feed out with. So it could could have bit you if you hadn't known it was there, but I saw it. And, and it was a big one. Yeah. One of the bigger ones I've seen. But instead of running into them in the yard, most of the time it'd be in the woods, maybe in the blackberry patch mm -hmm. if you're picking blackberries. What's it? Old people call him call it old no shoulders or something. Yeah. Old no, no shoulders. No shoulders. Yeah. We have lots of black snakes which we just ignore, unless we, I mean, unless they're trying to get the chickens or something like that. But mostly we have like little. I would say a garter snake, but Corey calls them, what does she call them, earth snakes? Well, that little one we seen this morning yeah. is an earth snake, but then there's a garter snake that's a totally yeah. different thing. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of the little earth snakes, yeah. though, around our house for whatever reason. A lot of king snakes, rat yeah. snakes, corn snakes. We have lots of those. But none of those are poisonous. Two you got to worry about is the copperheads and the right. rattlesnakes. For some reason, you get just down the road here, not far, uh, quarter of a mile from here down Henry's. Rattlesnakes like that little, oh. that little holler for some reason because yeah. they've they've seen several really big ones down there, especially around their chicken coop over the yeah. years. Yeah. I was down there once when they found a pretty big one. It's funny how snakes do that. Other animals do it too, but how they kind of pick a certain area. Right. That's something about it they like, and down at the bottom of our driveway here seems to be a place where, where they they cross the road in that one spot a whole lot. I've seen copperheads there I don't know how many times. Saw a rattlesnake down there once, mm -hmm. years ago. Right in the same place. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to the creek or back and forth from the creek. I don't know. Another thing people ask us about is ticks. Do we wear like repellent or something? And we don't. No. Um, we do like check, you know, feel yourself, feel your hair, whatever, to see if you have ticks. Kind of keep an eye out for them too. Uh-oh. Dropped it. Caught it. Uh, but we don't wear any kind of repellent or anything like that to ward off uh, ticks and we don't we're not really bothered by them very often either but the thing that bothers me the most which is not harmful at all like a tick or a, a snake snakes more so poisonous one than ticks but it's chiggers <laughs> so chiggers eat me alive and I could wear something for them, but I don't. Usually I just suffer the misery, and then it gets better, and I suffer the misery again all summer long. And 
and for me it's not necessarily a lot of people say when they pick blackberries or something like that i just literally walk through the yard and i attract chiggers you don't have them that bad <coughs> do you no they don't bother me yeah. what likes me is bees yeah the bees attack matt he just walks out the door and they start bomb diving yeah his head i don't know why that is dive bombing bomb diving what did i say you said bomb diving. <laughs> Uh, anyway, they adore Matt. And that just, that's just happened in the last 10 or 12 years or 15 years, whatever. It never was like that when I was young. It's because you got so sweet in your old age. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. But they fly all over me everywhere I go, not just here. Yeah. I'm sure there's some kind of scientific reason somebody may know, but I don't. I can literally be, I mean, I'll be outside sitting on the deck or something, no bees, nowhere. Maybe I've been there for 20 minutes or something, and Matt walks out. They and just come. And they don't come to me, they come to Matt. They hit me in the head. Yeah. They just bounce off of me, just fly into me. They like you. That makes me angry, too. Yeah. Don't it? Yes. I get colorful when that happens. Yeah. Yeah, you get colorful. I was trying to think of anything else people's asked a lot recently, uh, talking about thinking about being outdoors was the snakes and the spiders. Also <coughs> about our mulch. So we've done a video about mulch before, but in a nutshell, you have to do your own research, your own due diligence. Lots of people really like mulch that garden and other people don't want to use mulch. It's just, again, it's just personal preference and what you what you find and what you desire and what you figure out what what works best for you that's the main thing about gardening i tell people it's not that it's that hard is it no it's easy but you just have to i mean it's hard work but as far as the knowledge it's not that hard uh, anyone can garden but you just have to find out what works best for you what you like best and then what kind of works best for your your climate your soil your whatever so matt and i have been using mulch for years and years works great and we look for us it works good and some, it, some people tell us don't do it it's yeah, horrible don't do it it i guess some works people say it robs nitrogen as it decomposes out of the soil is one thing maybe it makes your soil too acidic i don't know i've heard read different varying things but for us we like to use it because it keeps down on weeds keeps down on the weeding and mm -hmm. because our soil is not naturally good soil no it's horrible so over the years of using it, once it breaks down, then it, it, our soil's so much better. I mean, mm -hmm. we've literally worked 20 years on our soil, mm -hmm. hadn't we? Mm -hmm. And so between the not weeding and letting it break down to enrich the soil, we just find that it works really well for us. And it keeps in moisture too. That's another thing, keeps in moisture. So if it rains, it kind of holds that moisture in there. But uh, again, you just have to do your due diligence and research and then try is what I would say, like we did, and figure out what works best for you. As far as the kind of mulch, we, where we live, there's several sawmills, and so we use basically, it's what would you call it, tree mulch, mm -hmm. bark mulch? It's tree mulch. Yeah, so that's what we use, which is readily available. In a lot of places, the uh, EMCs or electric companies, and they do that here too, they'll kind of pile up big where they chip where they're doing right aways and they chip all the stuff that they cut and that's free in a lot of places it is here you when you have to go and load it and all that but if you wanted to use something like that and we've used that <coughs> one time when they the last time they were doing right aways right here at, up our wilson holler up here i went and asked them or actually i got katie to go ask them if they were going to chip it instead of taking it somewhere else if they bring it up here and dump it and they did so we used that that year. Mm -hmm. It looked great. Yeah. I hate weeding though. So that's my main thing is I mm -hmm. like to use it because it keeps the weeds down. Yeah. <coughs>
and it has really enriched our soil over the years. Yeah, it's took 20 years too, yeah, but it's but done it. Yeah, but it has, yeah. It's so different than when it, our garden beds that are we've been using for a long time. And we also use uh, compost from our chickens, and then we usually, at least every year, pretty much, we buy a load of mushroom compost, and mm -hmm. we use that. Mm -hmm. um, it's turned the soil from bright red to black. Yeah, yeah. Just year after year after year after year, it's finally, especially this one down here, it's finally turned dark and it's and it yeah. does pretty decent. Yeah, it does good for us. I'm trying to think of any other questions. Another one we get really often is why, why like I'll say, we don't grow corn. Why don't we grow corn? We just don't have enough sunshine right here up up where we're at on the north side of the mountain. You're in a space, isn't it? Uh, well, that, but we've tried several times and it just never fully <coughs> matures, never does. And then, you know, three or four years later, we'll try again and it just never fully matures. When Pap was still living, my father, he had a big garden and we, in that big garden, we planted corn and potatoes and beans usually. Mm -hmm. And then kind of did like the squash and tomatoes at our house and whatever else, peppers, whatever. And he'd do that at his house, but we all shared in that big garden. And it got way more sunshine. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we don't really have a, like Matt said, we ain't got much space here on the goat bluff. But mostly we don't have enough sunshine. If we plant corn, it's like a, it never gets hardly as tall as I am even. Mm -hmm. And then the ears just don't mature. There's just not enough sunshine. Not enough full sun. Nope. I gotta buy a corn. Yeah. Lucky for us, uh, there's a farmer just down the road that grows corn, and we, for the last several years, we buy from him pretty much since Pap's been gone. So, I don't know how much longer he'll he'll be doing it either, but hopefully he'll continue to let us buy corn from him. Mm -hmm. And he just happens to grow our favorite kind, Silver Queen, so. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good. It? Oh, it's so good. Get some fresh corn and a cucumber and tomato and cornbread and maybe some fried squash. It's just a meal. Gosh, yeah. a feast. Yep. Yeah. Got them bees. Yeah, the bees have found that. Yeah. I'd be scared to death if we had bees. If we had a lot of them. I mean, if we had beehives. Oh, yeah. They might attack carry you. Carry me on. Swarm you. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they would be like you could go out there and they just like make the beard bee, uh, yeah, bee, bee beard. beard on you. I'm saying all my words backwards, ain't I? Yeah, it's <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, they would form that on you and on your arms and you could just be like encased by bees. Yeah. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, it'd be fantastic. <laughs> I'd probably get some good photos, yeah. video out of it. Yeah, right before the ER. <laughs> oh, gosh. What bee do you think hurts the worst? The one that's hurt me the worst out of any of them is Japanese hornet. Oh, yeah, I've never been stung by one of them. That's, <coughs> that is an experience. Yeah, it might actually bled when it stung you. Yeah, it bled out the, the hole yeah. of the stinger. And it swelled. I only got stung once, and it swelled up just unbelievably. And then it it it, it bled out the hole where, where I got stung for quite a while. I mean, not squirting or anything. No, but just, just just a dribble. Yeah, yeah, but it bled for several hours, and swelled up and turned all kinds of green and black and yellow, like you'd been in a car wreck. That's what it looked like, mm -hmm. and it hurt. Mm -hmm. That's by far the most painful bee sting I've had. I've never been stung by them, but waspers hurt. Yeah, they hurt. But this is a whole other level yeah. of that. The hornets hurt, too. Yeah, they do. Which none of them are fun. Yellow jackets and yeah. honeybees, they all hurt. But. It's a wonder I didn't get eat up because I was right over top of their nest working and didn't, didn't know it was know there. No. When we were little, me and Paul, my brother Paul, we'd always step on, we was barefooted all the time in the summer, and we'd step on always, at least three or four times a summer, step on a honeybee and get get yep. stung while we were playing in the yard. And 
granny would pet us and our foot would swell up and she'd get us a pillow on the couch and put our foot up on it and let us let us rest. Let and, you act like you was really hurt. Yeah, let us act like we was really hurt. Yeah. And then it itch the living daylights. I mean, mm -hmm. just itch, itch, itch. Yep. And your foot be all swelled. Do you wish that's all you had to worry about now? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> I do. Thank goodness, I feel so bad for people who are allergic to bees. Thank goodness me or Matt are not. Mm -hmm. I feel really sorry for people who are. that have to be terrifying to never know if you're going, because you never know when you're going to run into a bee or get stung. So. Uh, I get yeah. it several times a year. Yeah. I got about, I got a little over 50 one time at one time, years mm. ago. I got one of my grandpa's bee gowns. I didn't really know what it was. I was young and they covered me up. Mm. I can't remember my uncle counted how many it was. It was over 50. So I was they, allergic, I'd be dead. And they put tobacco on it? Yeah, they spit tobacco yeah. juice all and rubbed it over me and it was nasty. Mm. Or I thought it was. I guess it probably helped to say it does. Yeah. I got stung five times one time on my hand. Yellow jackets. Stuck my hand basically in their nest. Didn't see it. It's on the underside of a bridge and I was looking over to look at the water, look at the creek. Mm -hmm. Stuck my hand in it. It'd make it throb, don't it? Yeah, it hurt. Swelled up real big. And then I torpedoed the, didn't, of course I couldn't even see, the big brush pile that one of the ones that we, when Thomas was here that he'd moved, that had been there for so many years. This was years ago. Matt was working out of town then, and I was eating watermelon, just like now. I had watermelon today, I love watermelon. And I come out here to throw out my rind and threw it and did not know that there was a nest there. So of course I, I hit the nest or hit nearby it or whatever. And even before I could just turn, just like turn to walk back in the house, they come directly to me and st they stung me, I don't know why, on my mouth. So I had like three, I think it was three. My face swelled up really big. and Oh, that hurts, don't it? Yeah, it hurt. And uh, since Matt wasn't here, my brother Steve heard about it, and he come up here with a shotgun and shot the nest. Yeah, just Matt wasn't here. I said, well, it was really my fault. I just didn't know the nest was there, and then I torpedoed their nest with a watermelon rind. But they come just like instantly. It's how fast they are, straight back to me before I could even turn to walk back in the house. Yeah, it makes me kill him mad. Something like that happens. Mm He's -hmm. gone by the next day, but I went to bed. I remember I took a Benadryl or something. Took some, maybe Steve or Kim had Benadryl because I don't ever have that. And went to bed. <coughs> Queen Katie was big enough to fend for themselves. And then by the next morning, it was just sore, but not. My lips had went down. I'd like to have bees, though. I've always wanted bees. Be good for a garden. Yeah. You'd have to work them. Yeah, they'd attack. Like I said, though, you could have the beard, the bee beard, and have it on your arms, like have it enclosed. What is there some kind of show or movie like that? I guess there's lots of them. Anyway. Yeah, you just walk in on the porch with no clothes on and do this. And yeah, they just yeah. attack, be all over you. Yeah, they would cover you me could, up. We could rent you out for, like, swarms when people have swarms and then they'd go to you and then you could take them to where they need to go. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Make some extra spending money. I don't need money that bad. Yeah. What is that little bird over there? Is that a robin or? Yeah, it's a robin. It's a robin just getting inching closer and closer to us. It's checking us out. Yeah, it's a pretty little bird. Mm-hmm. That's another thing people do ask about the birds that they hear in our videos, and I'm terrible. I don't know. <coughs> Matt probably knows more than me, but I don't know the sound of one bird from another. I mean, I know the sounds. I'm familiar with them, but whether or not it's a, a robin or a cardinal or a blue jay, I'm not sure. I know cardinals and blue jays. And yeah. 
uh, woodpeckers and that sort of thing. But there's a whole lot of them I don't know. Yeah. Most of them I don't. Well, mostly what we have here is cardinals and blue jays and robins and sparrows. I've seen two of the big uh, woodpeckers in the last week. Yeah. One of them was up at the top of the hill when I was pulling up the driveway and mm -hmm. it flew right under, looked like it went under the porch. And then I seen one down there at the bottom of the hill. Things are pretty. Yeah, they're really pretty. They make a racket too. Yeah, well, years ago, me and Matt's heard this horrible noise, couldn't figure out what it was, and one of them was pecking on our porch beam or porch what do you call it post, post yeah remember that yeah it's just out there like a machine <laughs> gun inside the house and you yeah. could literally feel it in yeah. the floor it just rattled the house yeah. and i thought my gosh what is what that, is that? It's woodpecker. and then i turned looking there's a woodpecker on the side of the post up there yeah. watch the ones that make nests see you can see it it's making its nest under the porch what are those every year that come back there those are like those swallows yeah. It's funny that they use that, I don't know if it's the same bird, but they use that same nest. That same nest has been there 15 years. Mm -hmm. Long time. Yeah. We always just leave it alone because yeah. we know there'll be another one come back and use it next mm -hmm. year. Once or twice they've made a nest on my shelf on the porch, but mm -hmm. it's not been in several years, they've not. Mm -hmm. And you can see that one, the little mama, what she's doing now. She's flying up and down and up and down and up and down. That bush is torn me in yet. I can't see You can't see. Can't see. It's been a pretty day. Yeah, it has. Started out a little cool, it warmed up, but it's not got too hot. Yeah, it's been about right. And the robin's still over there watching us. Wonder if it's got a nest somewhere close by and we're bothering it. It's hunting. Hunting. Yeah, I've seen it. It's picked up a worm or two since we've been talking. Oh. It's watching and listening, kind of. I guess I can hear them. Yeah. Picking, digging up worms out of that mulch. All of our potatoes, the ones in that bed and then the ones in the grow bags are all probably what, up six inches mm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they're all looking really good. <coughs> I'm glad to be eating those. Yeah, I'm gonna can some this year. Mm -hmm. I think we ate our last jar this week. Did we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got a fly, horse fly. The chickens are all wondering what we're doing. Mm -hmm. They wonder a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Robin. Mm -hmm. Now that we've got all the work done, now our big decision is going to be what to put in all those beds. And I just don't have a clue. It's up to you. You're the boss lady. I just don't have a clue. I mean, we could put squash. We could put, you know, whatever. I want Matt to get some, uh, he's going to get some more cattle panels. And maybe with this big long stretch out here, we could put cattle panels, grow some beans on them. Mm -hmm. I think we'll put peppers in one or two of them too. Yeah, we could do that. Put peppers. If we put our peppers in those, it would save us some room where we usually plant them. It wouldn't be so choked up. Yeah, it's true. Or we could plant some different kind of peppers, like some hot ones that I like. I got you some jalapenos Did at you? the cider fields, and then I planted some cayenne. So, I mean, cool. I've started some cayenne. We're going to have peppers in the greenhouse if. Yeah, got blooms. 
You can get them planted. I know, but I keep thinking, can't plant them till first week or so in May. Yeah, but weekend after next. Is it? And then they, I probably should up pot them, but then I'm like, I'm so close. I don't want to up pot them again and then plant them. Right. So maybe they'll, maybe they'll survive. Not as happy as they look, they'll be fine. Yeah, they're pretty healthy looking. And they started in the house. Yeah. In the living room. Mm-hmm. Started in the living room. Kept thinking I'd start something else in there, but I'd give up and I cleaned house Friday. I took the greenhouse, little tiny one that we use inside, back to the basement. So put it up <coughs> till next year. Everything works good. It does, yeah. It does really work good, yeah. I'll put the, in case you're interested to see what it is, I'll put the link in the basement. We've used it for, I'll put the link in the basement. I cannot talk today. <laughs> I'll put the link in the basement and y'all can find it there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description. Um, but we've used it two, two winters and it's just worked really well. Made more, yeah. made more of it. Yeah, I thought about buying another one this year because of that bitter cold that we had in March, those two weeks, and then our greenhouse heater died, and or the electrical issue we had and all that, and I thought I should just buy another one and then I'll have two, but then I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that this year, so I didn't. You get another one before next year. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, it works really well. It's kind of small enough that, um, as far as the footprint in your house that it takes up that it, and if you had a garage or a, something like that i'm sure that would be even better or maybe you, we just have to put ours in the living room but it's kind of against the wall so not really in the way too much but it's for its size it holds a lot i don't know why you couldn't put them in the basement and, well, leave, and leave them on all the time yeah, yeah i could i guess and I, we could have three or four yeah. of them and just don't never turn them off yeah I worry about which we could put heat mats on them. I worry That's about, what I'm about but use the heat put, mats like right, we did use. Yeah, and that, they should be fine and with them enclosed. I was worried about like at night when the fire goes out, you know, that it gets real cold down there, and upstairs it stays warmer. Yeah, but, but I mean, but with yeah, the heat mats in, inside with them things shut up, it'll hold the heat. Yeah, yeah. It ain't that cold in the basement anyway. Well, no, but. Well, maybe that's what we'll do next year, especially if we get two of them, because then we yeah. wouldn't have nowhere to put the other one. Yeah. We'll put them down there and just turn them on and leave them on. Yeah. It's one of the things I, so many things I love about being, like, growing our own food and eating it and all that. It's just such a pleasure. But that's one of the things, like now, sitting in the warm sunshine, we've been outside in shirt sleeves all day, and sweated some and enjoyed it but then those peppers we started them on a really cold winter day you know and and nurtured them and took care of them and kept them in the house and then eventually moved them to the greenhouse still taking care of them in there kind of like the i don't know i love that process mm -hmm. and then especially the best process part of it is what matt loves is when we'll actually pick the peppers and do something with them, whether it's dry them, eat them, right. can them, put them in pickles, do something. Right. Yeah, like very rewarding. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I guess I better go in and cook Matt some supper. You getting hungry? Mm -mm. No. Oh well. Okay. No, you got too hot, Dad. I'm tired, I ain't really hungry. Yeah. Maybe I won't cook no supper. Okay. You can have another popsicle. Okay, if I get hungry. <laughs> It'd be real feeling, huh? It will be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Probably wake up one o'clock in the morning eating the bed covers. Yeah, you'd be hungry Starving. if you don't eat. Yeah, you you'll have to eat something. You'll have to eat something. Yeah, but I don't I don't want nothing just yet. Well, we appreciate you stopping to visit with us. Uh, we're always grateful when you stop by to help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of making a garden. So that's what a whole lot of our lives and our joy and all that comes from is actually making a garden and growing part of the food that we eat. That's it. Yeah. That's a wrap, as Corey says. Yeah, Katie does. That's a wrap. Something. And she's counting fish. Much as she's fish, yeah. she better come back with she something. She better bring us Thought she's down all week's fish. She said she might get up early in the morning and come home. Here? 
She ain't coming. On is Sunday? She? Yeah. No, she won't be here. Mom. Yeah, she said that. She said she might, so she could go to church out here. But she ain't gonna come, is she? Yeah. Well, she might be back Monday morning. Maybe. Can't never tell about that. Mm -mm. No. You can't. She's a wild card for sure. Mm -hmm. She took after the Wilson side a little bit. Don't you? I think she's like her daddy up one side and down the other. <laughs> she looks reckon? she looks like the Wilsons, I'll give you that. She looks like the Wilsons. I see Wilsons when I look at her. But no, her personality and her all that is all you. Is that right? Uh -huh. She's your mini mini me as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny so many Lucky you, you've got two of me. Yeah. So funny so many people that watch our videos think that Corey and Katie are just a spitting image of you. You know? Mm hmm And then other people think they especially Corey looks like me. Everybody sees something different though. Mm -hmm. I think Corey looks like my side and Katie looks like your That's side. That's what I've always thought since they were a little bitty. I mm -hmm. thought Corey is a Presley or I mean like you and Miss Cindy is what mm -hmm. I see when I see Corey. And Katie's a Wilson, yeah. But then, you know, Pap thought Corey was just a spitting image of his grandmother, so everybody sees something different. Mm -hmm. And Zalma, when they were just little, because, you know, she died, but they were just little, she told me one time, she said, that one, just like your grand great-grandma Carrie. Which one? Corey. She yeah. said, so she's seen the same thing that Daddy did. Huh. Yeah, I went down there, take them, I guess, probably trick-or-treat, and I don't know what was doing. She said, that one's just like your grandma, Carrie. Huh. I said, yeah, that's what Daddy says. I see Matt and his mother, everybody sees something different. I think April looks more like me than Corinne Katie. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Mm -hmm. We were talking about stuff like this the other day, and Granny said when she... Uh, I don't remember if it was Paul or who said that she looked like somebody had told her maybe it was somebody at Shady Grove or Shady Grove told her that she looked so much like Gazzy like her mother mm -hmm. and Granny said yeah I know when I look in the mirror I see her and I said when I used to meet April at Tri-County sometimes once or twice when I met her in the hallway it was mm -hmm. this weird feeling like I was <laughs> meeting myself from years ago you know yeah. But I thought she was like this freaky thing, like, that's me. No, that's April. Yeah. Oh, look. Sweet little bird. What's that? Oh, yeah. yeah what, so what's that one? Is, is uh, that a s swallow or sparrow or whatever? I don't know. This looks like some kind of wren. Wren. That's what it is. It's a wren. A Carolina wren. Sweet, ain't it? Pretty. Yeah, I think I look a lot like Granny, but then sometimes I see something in my face, especially when I'm editing videos mm -hmm. that goes across my face that's so much like Daddy, mm -hmm. I can barely stand it. You look a whole lot like your Daddy. Yeah. I really never realized that until I started. I mean, you never look at yourself talking because you can't see yourself. You know, when you're talking and moving mm. and you look at yourself in the mirror, but you're still. But when I started editing videos, sometimes, I mean, immediately I'd be like, oh my goodness, I look just like Daddy. It's something about my something expressions is what it is, though. It's like you don't look like Papa Tony, but your expressions are his. Yeah, that's just because I was raised by Right, I probably yeah. look like my real daddy, whoever that is. Oh, shut up. You look just like Miss Sandy. <laughs> I said my real daddy. He is your real daddy. I don't know. Oh, shut up. <clears throat> it's, but you have his expressions. Especially when you get mad, you draw your brow down tight. I don't get mad much. <laughs> yeah. Yosemite Sam. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's easy to get mad if you live in a house full of girls. And blame it on us. Yeah, I mean, it's just bound to happen. Yeah. 
most righteous man's ever been would get mad if he lived in a house full of girls. Yeah. I don't believe it. Huh? I don't believe that's the reason. I I need you don't even think it contributes at all? Well, maybe. It might. There's some, been some drama in our house. <laughs> yeah. We have really good kids though, we're lucky. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't ask for no better. Mm -mm. <laughs> a whole lot better than I was. And they're better than I was. A whole lot better I mean, than I've I was. I've always said they're better than I was. They're the girls I wish I'd have been. Yeah, they better than I am now. Really. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. me, so I don't want to say they're better than you, but yes, they're, they're really, really good. They're good, good kids. They're what I should have been when I was their age, mm -hmm. younger. Of course, by the time I was their age, I was a mother. Uh, what are you saying? What was you doing? <laughs> Did I miss out on something? I meant when I was a teenager. Was you and, uh, going to town and stuff that I didn't know about? No, you know what I mean. They're so kind and giving and generous and helping people and yeah they're good yeah. They're on the right path a whole lot younger than i was right. you know, we've had all these bird encounters what'd be really great is if a big hawk landed right there and then we could tell corey yeah she'd be my head yeah I wish I could just hold my arm out and one land on it and then we can film it and show it to her. She would just, <laughs> yeah. man, she'd hyperventilate. Yeah. I don't know how she became so attached to hawks. I don't know. She used to like groundhogs, but that didn't, that was nowhere near the level of loving the hawks. It is funny that she likes them though because they're vicious. Oh yeah. yeah. They are efficient killers. I think that's why she likes them. Yeah, Maybe deep down she's one of those. Yeah. She just likes how they look. They are pretty birds. Yeah, they are. Well, you don't want me to make you no supper? Not nothing much. I mean, maybe. How about a handbanger? Yeah, it's whatever. I mean, I just don't want no big production. I'm not all that hungry. That big, big breakfast this morning is what did it. I've kind of overdone it, didn't Boy, I? Boy, it's good, though. It was good. And if you overdo it cooking it, I'm absolutely going to overdo it eating it. Yeah. And I did. I, just, I know Austin likes breakfast, so I just want to make it special. Well, it was good. They were coming. <laughs> it was good. I ought to weigh 400 pounds. Well, yeah, I eat that stuff. You're very active, though. Very active. Get up, we're gonna go sleep. I'm just enjoying it. Look at all the different colors of green. Yep. You can really see the leaves after that rain coming right. out, can't you? Right. I mean, what, in two weeks they'll be fully leafed out? Oh, yeah. They yeah, almost are now. The maples and stuff really yeah. are. Yeah. But the oaks are, the oaks little, are behind. They're a little behind, they always are. You know, that year Daddy died, we went up the creek and how, I mean, just. I'll never forget how beautiful that was, mm -hmm. that Sunday before he died, the mm -hmm. green. Yeah. It was just like being in a green cathedral. Mm -hmm. Cause it was so bright, because it was so barely leafed out like. Up there at the Robinson Cove. Yeah, that's a long walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up there and eat lunch. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty close. Well, all right.
I better go feed the chickens anyway. Give them some water. Okay. I forgot to say one thing. But all the stuff I said. I was going to say that my subscriber sent me a redbud tree and we planted it. Mm -hmm. Say it now, and then you can insert it. Mm -hmm. I'm really thankful. It's going to be pretty. Put it where I can see it out my kitchen window. Mm -hmm. Next spring, hopefully, I'll look over there and see some pink. And mm -hmm. I think it's about my red bud tree. Yeah. How big they get? Not real big. Not like a, you know, maybe about that size. Maybe not even that big. Mm -hmm. Cool. Here comes a butterfly. <laughs> Couldn't get ready for it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'm gonna pick up our popsicle mask. What'd you do with your paper? I did it. Yeah.